This is a new low, isn't it? Is it? Or is it a new high? I'm saying high. Hello, welcome to another video. I don't know what this one is really. It's basically just me trying to crowbar in this bike uh, and also try and give you some entertainment along the way. You'll have seen me using these bikes before. Get it in background there, look. Hold on. There we are. Hold on. Not very professional, but whatever. A scoot. And it's the electric bikes from a scoot. I've been getting into my electric bikes recently. A mountain Bike UK magazine reached out to me and we I went off with them onto Dartmoor at the end of summer. Q, Q summer. I spent a couple of days with the guys from Mountain Bike UK magazine. They hooked me up with an electric bike to use for a couple of days, which was amazing. We spent some time pootling around Dartmoor, foraging. We checked out the Stone Circle, the Fernworthy stone circle before being chased off by midges we had some beautiful skies we we filtered our own water and then we set up camp using rab tarps and our bikes and then we just drank a bit of wine the sky was on form the milky way was on show we wild swam the next day i drove past what looked like a cafe being towed by a tractor there it is and then later as we were driving through the car park we saw said tractor which was selling coffees and butties which were a welcome end to an amazing adventure <laughs> and hung out with them lads and i was they put me in the magazine and they let me use a really high-end electric bike and they are amazing but they're very very expensive and some of that i can't afford i think the one i was riding was maybe eight grand or something like that which is mad but if you're looking for an entry level budget sort of electric bike these SKU do some really good ones now full transparency I've spoke about these before on the channel and uh, I bought one off my own back similar to this it was the older version of this and I really liked it so I reached out to them and they've sent me this one which is sort of the updated version and I've been pootling around on it and I really like it but <laughs> the reason I can't I haven't got any drone footage or GoPro footage or anything of this because I recently went to Scotland with Fern. <laughs> Why? Fern was invited to the west coast of Scotland to do some PR work for Visit Scotland and I was kindly invited along as a plus one see all this all along here it's an invasive species Japanese knotweed it's like the Chuck Norris of plants it is an edible but it'll grow through concrete it'll grow through anything and you have to treat it over weeks and weeks because normal roundup or whatever just won't kill it off it'll just suck it up and keep going it's the hardest plant I know of and it's a pain in the ass but it's edible and delicious but it's a little bit too woody at the moment. But look at it. Woody Harrison. Yep. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Got it, that's the shot. Medic. We were also invited to a brewery tour, which was one of the highlights for me. The plan was is that they were going to become a, a beef farm, mm. but these buildings were obviously kind of lying obsolete because they'd went away from dairy. So this that elderflower beer? Yeah, it is. It's uh, elderflower sour. I love, I love a very sour beer. Yeah, I don't think I've tried very sour beer. It's a little bit kind of okay, acidic, so you, you, you may taste it in your uh, throat. There we are. Latch and locks. Here we go, <laughs> look. Medic! The medicate, maybe some paracetamol and a little bit of a cuddle and it'll be right as rain in the morning. On a brewery tour, it was an amazing tour actually, it was really fun. And we've just been with the guy called Stuart on his little buggy up into the fields, fed the deer, uh, and then he hooked us up with an antler. Where are you going now? 
How far back is this thing? I can't even remember. Oh, I'll take you. Okay. I'll just put this in the back. I'll put this in the back with a dead goose. Yeah. <laughs> Antler and Deckler. It's a massive eight point stag horn, like stag antler. And he's given us it for now, and he's a legend. If you're watching this, Stuart, which you definitely won't be, respect. Oh right, going in here, there's a little island out there, so I'm going to swim over. Like the branch that co is coming out of it, it's got its own, it's got its own little ecosystem on top of that, and then a tree which would be classed as a big tree anywhere else, growing out of the side of it. That is an absolute beef. <laughs> it's a dam <laughs> built by beavers. Mark tells me the beavers around here. Yeah. Yep. Yep, there is. <laughs> I have seen them. <laughs> there you go, I've seen them. How big do they get? A kind of uh, spaniel, 20, 25 kilo. Right. Really? Decent yeah. feed. Like that? Decent size, yeah. Yeah, good feed. Bye bye, baby, thanks yeah. for your time. <laughs> <laughs> right, so here we are with Mark. Mark Pickering, who is a professional woodsman. And he's just gone to get me a beaver stick out of the lock there. And you can tell it's a beaver stick because. There's no bark on it. No bark on it. Marks, and you can see how they've just chamfered the edge off with their teeth. That'd be a good little tool, that, like a little digging tool. Pass us the beaver stick. Thank you. <laughs> you can see there, stuff. guys, look. It's been nibbled by a beaver. There you go. They'll be well they eating it, aren't they? Well they're eat. eating it, yeah. Wow, look at the little beaver teeth yeah. marks. Do you have any mushrooms? No. Uh, not clear. We'll dry it right here. Mm. So what do they do? Are they, so they're trying to get that bit of wood off? They're just trying to get fill the tree to get the top branches. They can oh. sort of pressure branches and then they pull it down into the wall. The tide's changed. I, I missed my tide, so it's a rising tide. I don't know these waters particularly well, so I'm only going to stick around the, co uh, the shore, maybe head over to that island. And I'm against the clock, so I'll best chuck my gear on. Get in, hopefully we'll bring you some scallops and we'll have a little cook up. So this was a bit of a disaster. I'd geared up, ready to go get some scallops and see what I could find. I entered the water and as I swam down, my band snapped. There you can see it snap. I shat myself and that was the end of my spearfishing journey. I also tried to change my battery on my GoPro and dropped my GoPro, so that is now broken. <laughs> Not only am I now GoPro-less, I'm now drone-less because I was flying the drone around this beautiful old castle. I lost track of it and the next thing you knew, or the next thing I knew, it had hit a tree. We tried to get it down. I even paid a tree surgeon a few days later to go and he, he couldn't find it. He said it was getting dark and then he ghosted me. Never heard from him again and so luckily I got the footage from the app but this is the last thing I ever saw of my drone. I've had it for a long time and I'm gutted that it's gone, so that's that. Look at it, that's the last thing the drone ever saw. Absolutely wounded. So this is just, <laughs> I can't get any onboard footage on my bike or drone footage, so saws. So what I did do is I went foraging yesterday for some, I, my quarry was hedgehog mushrooms, so let's take you back to that. My quarry for today is these, which I've just stumbled across, which are hedgehog mushrooms. Delicious edible mushroom. This is a lovely specimen, nice and clean. And uh, you can see in there is why it's called a hedgehog mushroom. It doesn't have gills like your typical mushroom. It has these little spines that if you brush, it will just come off like that. They are edible. And we'll pop that in the basket. There's a few here. So I spend a bit of time foraging some of these selected mushrooms.
and there we go it didn't take much time and as you can see a lot of hedgehogs in there <laughs> yes awesome so oh, it smells so good top three mushroom for me this as far as sort of edibility it's just so nice holds together really well when cooked and really easy to identify so I've got some hedgehog mushrooms I've just come out today into my permission woodland that I've got and foot I haven't even biked here I'm just sort of I parked on the outskirts of the wood and got this out the, out the van um, and just brought it into the woods just to show you these are my own panniers the uh, Altura these are really good I am going to do a full bike packing video on this where I take my panniers I'll show you what I take with me and uh, do cover some miles and do a couple of couple of nights wild camping but I just haven't had the time of late things have been a bit busy in real life so this is what I'm doing for now but stick around and we will be going out and taking this for a full wild camp but I just want to show you so it's pedal assist so once you start pedaling it just the motor kicks in it's got a mid motor there that kicks in and it makes getting up hills and and going into the wind really easy it's got a really good charge on it I'll I'll do a voiceover now and just let you know a few of the stats this is the Paluna Pro commute bike which is perfect for holding panniers it's got a top speed of 15.5 miles per hour it's a 250 watt mid drive motor up to 80 miles estimated distance per charge it's got nine speeds and weighs 125 kilograms I'll leave a link below for the bike and a scooter doing a black sale which starts on the 1st of October so check that out as well cheers that's the bike now let's get them uh, hedgehog mushrooms cooked up I'm gonna have a bacon and mushroom sarni make a little fire I've got the bush box because I'm hungry so we'll have that sit and appreciate the uh, the woodland for a bit and then bounce let's get a fire going knife of choice custom se3 shout out luke york knives york knife should i say Right, I've got some, it's just dried grass. It's super dry, so I don't need a, a lot of it, or I don't need to fluff it up or anything, it should be fine. And we're gonna use some flint and steel. Ignore that, my daughter did that. Shout out Kaya. Uh, and some char cloth. Uh, to make this, it's just use some 100% cotton, cut it up into strips, bang it in your tin, any old tin, if it's if it's airtight, you'll want to put a little oil in it, put put it on your fire, and then once the smoke starts stops coming out, you've got your char cloth. I use this, which is an old Altoids tin. I've had it for years. You don't need to put a hole in these because of the hinges. They, uh, I hope it's falling to pieces. Not no, can't lose my drone, my GoPro, and my Altoids tin. And I won't be able to cope. All right, well we lost one of hinges, but it's still still going strong. And this stuff is great, it's so dry and so flammable, it just takes a spark really well. Should catch. Come on. Once it, once it does catch, it only needs to take one little spark, and there it is, look. You see? It's only small, but that won't go out. Pop it in my tinder bundle at the bottom so when it lights it'll go up and be reet. Ah. Have I gone out? Nah.
get me dry wood ready. If it's a windy day, you can just sort of do it in wind. There we go. That wind did that. Into there. Go and catch your beast. There we go, we have fire. Ow, ow, ow. On with sticks. Whatever's lying around. Sorted. pan of choice is my lodge cast iron pan I love this I'll leave a link for this below get thwarter usually I clean all the spines off but I aren't too precious about that make sure you get all big bits of detritus off there and that is perfect a perfect specimen Look at that beauty. The oil I'm using is this beach smoked rapeseed oil, Tubby Tom's garlic infused, um, extra virgin. Gives a nice woody, I've had some already. Gives a lovely uh, sort of smoky taste. Do you know what? I'm gonna sack bacon off, don't need it. I just want mushrooms, mushroom sandwich. Get after it. You don't even need to use a knife really, you can just pull them apart. A bit more oil. And I'm going to spread a few of these around, just crumble them up and put them around the wood just because I don't see any in this wood, so it might encourage them. The rogues, the rogue spatula. Don't tell Spoonfest. Oh my god, that smells great. What more do you need? I don't need much more than this. I was. I was thinking, oh, what can I do with them? You know, can I make out special and elaborate? But no, when there's so many and it's, there's, the flavour's so good, keep it simple. That's what I'm just doing now. It's not lazy, it's simple. <laughs> two, mate, I'm having two, I'm hungry. I'm having double dropping. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper. They will release a lot of moisture. So what you want to do is just cook them until all them juices come out, and then just keep cooking it until them juices just evaporate and you're left with the cooked mushroom. Oh my god, it smells so good. What? Mm. I've also been tucking into this by uh, Tubby Tom Morning Glory. Don't forget to put your glove on there, because cast iron. I has, cast I has. Look at them. <laughs> Come on, mouse watering. You having it? Of course you're having it, haven't you? <laughs> Blue assed fly is what I've become. Uh, let's try one without. Oh. Mm. Really tastes the smoke from the oil. That's nice. Mm. You don't need out else. I'd be just happy yamming them from pan if I'm honest. Because it only comes around once a year, doesn't it, mushroom season? So you really want to take advantage of the mushroom flavour and don't do too much with it. Unless you've got an abundance of them. And you've got more time than I have. I'm sorry 
that this week's video isn't very good or <laughs> like there's no hiking or camping or anything but it's the season in it it's the season I did feel a bit rushed yeah I felt a bit of pressure on this one so sorry if that comes across I'm going out with Fern next week we're gonna do some filming and I've got some longer hikes planned and I had planned to go on a longer hike in winter quite a big one but when I was thinking about it I was thinking I, I like to put long days in when I'm on my own hiking and because it'll get dark at like five o'clock I'll just be stuck in my tent with nogging me and nogging for hours on end each day no <laughs> no 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 I wouldn't wish that upon anybody so I don't think I'm gonna do that maybe some shorter ones but it's about I think winter and I'm feeling it this year it's about hibernating in it it's about slowing down maybe just heading into the woods doing some cooking and taking things a little bit slower and easier so that's what's going to be coming up there's going to be a lot more sort of bushcrafty stuff coming up from me going you're not second one no all's bad and the fact that i knew where these came out of the ground just yesterday i picked them makes it even better there you go <laughs> jobs are good There we go. Uh, I don't know what this video has been, but thanks for watching if you have watched it. And I will be back soon with some wild camping and bushcraft and makeup reviews and all the other wonderful things that you've come accustomed to in the future. As always, I send you nothing but love. I hope you're all doing okay and still fighting the good fight. I'm, uh, stay tuned for more. I'm gonna do some bike packing on this. Iron Donkey. I will be putting more videos, like review, people ask me to review certain things like that I wouldn't really want to put on this main channel, like, um, uh, you know, what trainers, are you, what hiking boots do you use or what bag are you using? And so I do have a second channel, which I will link here and I'll put downstairs that you can check out. I'm going to be putting some more reviews on that, um, hopefully one a week. So if you're into watching <laughs> uh, reviews, check it out. Over and out. Take care of yourselves. Sorry, it hasn't been a, you know, I ain't even biked in. See you later. I just pushed it. <laughs> See you later. Oh, really? Ah, it's a new low, isn't it? Ah, it's a new low. It's a new low. I'm just parked on the other side of wood anyway. I'm not even, I haven't even biked in. Just done it to show off the bike. Sorry. Sorry, but uh, I do love you and goodbye. I'm like Jordan, trying to rise on to the top. Me, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were warden, I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars all have gone by by the month. Me, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were warden, I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars all have gone by by the month.